This is definitely my favorite filter plugin right now. Morph EQ. You can use it on growls and other basses. That's really all I use it for, but you can use it for other things as well. I guess you could also use it as a normal EQ, but that would make you boring, wouldn't it? Yes. Yes, it would. Like and subscribe. Now. Morph EQ's main function is this morph knob right here. If I double click anywhere in the EQ area, we get a point. And if I hover over it and click on this outer circle and drag it anywhere, I get a morph point. You can also control click to do that. And if I turn this morph knob, the EQ point goes from a starting position to the next position. And you can chain these together like so and morph through all of them. Now, this is incredibly useful for dubstep producers like myself. Gone are the days where you'd have to individually edit each parameter in an EQ to get the right sound. Those countless automations are now housed in just one knob. Beyond that, you have more knobs to morph your EQ with. Shift shifts it towards either a higher or lower frequencies. Pinch pulls all points together or pulls them apart. And spread shifts the effects apart over the left and right channels. Forgot to mention, if you click and drag on the morph path itself, you can bend it as you please. And of course, it has the typical EQ features like the ability to change filter type, frequency, Q, gain, whether the filter point is mid, side, left, right, or stereo, gain scale, input volume, output volume with available soft clipper, dry wet slider, the ability to make it effect in series or parallel, the ability to solo a filter point, undo or redo history, delete filter points, and save presets. By the way, did I mention it has a ton of presets for you to choose from? And if I click this button right here, I get a random one. Now, isn't that cool? There's also this thing that does all of this. Did I mention there are tooltips? Just enable this question mark up here. And there you go. All right, how about I actually use it though? I'm gonna start off with a growl because I would argue that's one of the best examples that I could use it for. I'm actually gonna create my own wave table. This is what is called a hyper growl. What I'm going to do is take a saw wave and put it on 16 times unison. And then I'm going to resample that a couple times. There's once, there's a second time, about a third time. At a certain point, you get diminishing returns from this. I'm not gonna turn the unison all the way off. Go into the wavetable editor and get rid of most of the wavetable. I'm gonna press F7 and put a note down at E. Put the pattern down so I have it playing consistently. This means I can just work on the growl without actually having to, you know, go to my keyboard and whatnot. Put that down, three octaves, take this macro and put it on the wavetable position. And then I'm going to put a bend minus on it as well. I'm actually not going to have this go through the entire wavetable, just about half from here and beyond. I want some movement, but not too much. And then since I do all of my processing in patcher, I'm going to patcherize this real quick and take the input of that macro if I can find it. Here we go. And then I'm going to link that to my MIDI controller. It's not black magic. I just have a MIDI keyboard to my left. Anyways, moving on, I'm going to do typical growl processing, three OTTs, fat rack that I'm going to put a serum effects on that for some hyper dimension. I'm actually going to put this macro on the level so it's not like stupid loud. Now I can control that. I'm doing this bend up a little bit. And now I have a cool little growl going on here. So what I'm going to do now is apply the Morphe Q. This has to go before all the extra processing for the sake of just how growls operate. And I'm going to take the input of this Morphe Q and also link it to my MIDI controller over here. Once again, not black magic, I swear. So to start off, I'm going to use a high pass and a low pass combination. And I think I'll also get a notch in here. I might also actually play with the shift knob. And even beyond that, I'm going to process this growl a little bit extra. And then I'm actually going to put a low pass on this. And you will see why later. So there's one bass. How about another one? This time I'm going to get a vital. Once again, I'm going to patcherize it. And then of course, map my MIDI controller to macro one. Once again, playing E5. What I'm going to do here is get really any wavetable. This one ought to do, I guess. And turn this down to negative 36. Do the exact same thing here. And I'm going to use the random amplitudes just a little bit. Get some interesting harmonics. And then for this second one, I'm going to do an inharmonic stretch. And I'm going to put bend on it. And then I'm also going to put that on the volumes. Sounds pretty interesting. I'm then going to do pretty much the exact same processing as the growl. Three OTTs, a fat rack, 
and the serum effects, once again with hyperdimension on it. Except this time, what I'm going to do is get a MIDI out here, put a chord into it, in this case an E minor 7th chord, I believe this is called. Go into your outputs, events, take the MIDI port 0 out, I'm going to get a serum and create a super saw. I might as well do some cool stuff with that as well. Turn on the sync warper mode and take a macro output from that and link that to my MIDI controller. I'll actually increase the effect of that, yeah, something like that. And now what I'm going to do is take a vocodex, I'm going to add one audio output where I'm going to have my bass, and then another audio output where I'm going to put the super saw and route that back into the serum effects. This one to one, and then put this two to two, and just kind of mess around with it for a second here, all together. That's pretty cool. And then I'm going to take my morph EQ, apply it, and of course take the morph output to my MIDI controller. I'm going to create a slightly more complex morph path this time. I'm also going to do a little extra processing with yet another morph EQ, just for, you know, the EQ part. And finally, I'm going to enable that other growl, and this is what we've got. And that's pretty cool. So how about some examples I've actually used it in? First of all, this project right here, which is actually very recent, pretty much all of the sub bases for this track have been some form of growl, so I've decided to use Morph EQ on pretty much all of them, starting off with this one. If I just solo this here. Opening it up, it's a pretty complicated patch. What's going on here is that I have the actual sub completely separate from the growl, which consists of two different serums, each of which are warping over time, as you can see here with LFO1, very slowly because it's just in the intro. But what you're really here for is, you know, the Morph EQ. So if I put that next to the automation, you can see what exactly is happening. I also have a very similar thing going on with this respace. Once again, I've separated out the sub from everything else just to make my processing easier, but here's the effect. The morphing is pretty slow on this one as well because we're not in the drop yet. Getting into the drop, I don't have the drop bases in this project file specifically, but I do have the sub base here. Once again, a pretty complicated patch as you can see, which thank God for patcher, otherwise I literally would not be able to sound design properly. Either way, once again, here is the morph EQ. Next to the automations. And if I real quick go ahead and show that in context. Here it is rendered out. I believe also in the sound designing of these bases, I have more FQ, so I'm just gonna open my sound design sessions for that. As you can see here, I got some crazy processing going on to make these bases as interesting as possible. But this more FQ is on just this growl down here. And then I have this section up here where I have a bunch of water samples kind of resonating. And then I have it again on this base, which that would be way too complicated to go over the processing for this. You know, here's the Morphe Q. I have the sub base for the kind of break section. This is made with a vital. Once again, I'm using the inharmonic stretch a ton to make it sound very metallic. And then I got this absolutely insane morphing path for pretty much everything going as crazy as possible. But it has a very simple automation, so all of this movement is just coming from the Morph EQ itself. As you can see, I'm going through three different paths at least for two of them and then just one for the other ones. This one actually has two. And then I'm also shifting the uh, EQ up and down randomly pretty much just to get some interesting noise. And finally, I have this other sub bass here, which is a pluck. Just with some saw waves and a whole lot of disperser. And I'm slowly going through this morph path until we get over here, where I have a modified version of that pluck bass, and the morph path is going a lot faster. Along with that, all of these have two morph paths. I'm going to go ahead and show you that to you in context. 
These are all the bases here. And here's that drop sub once again. Moving on to another song in which I've used this. It took kind of a while to find a use case in the song, but, but this growl right here has it. As you can see by the warp, if I just solo that real quick, we can go to the processing here. This is yet another growl that has two serums going on. And all of the movement is coming from this right here, which I have sh actually shifted down a little bit. And then I think I have one more time where I have it used in this track. If I can go ahead and find it real quick. I'm going to turn my sidechain off real quick, actually. The main growl for this section, which is layered with a super saw, once again has the Morphe Q. I actually have three serums this time. These ones are just going into the Morphe Q, which has a very linear path. And then this extra one, which is kind of a supporting layer to bring the rest of the beef to the sound. And that's all the places I've used it in so far in terms of my actual music. So I've already used this plugin quite a bit, but I'm definitely going to use it a lot more due to how useful it is. I'm not sponsored by this company yet, but I definitely recommend getting this plugin. If you go to the Minimal Audio website and scroll down a lot and then click here and then scroll down a lot more, you can get it for 50 bucks. Link in the description. So that's all for now. Make sure to like and subscribe and tell me what you think about this plugin in the comment section below. If you get it and make anything with it, or if you make any cool sounds at all, you can join my Discord server and send it to me in the sample share channel. The link to that is also in the description. Peace.